presidential election. Incumbent Yahya Jammeh has won the past four polls since taking power in a coup 22 years ago. Human rights groups accuse him of a crackdown on dissent. They fear this election will be rigged. Shortly we'll be joined to Nicholas Huck on the border between the Gambia and Senegal, but first, here's his report. Sukai Daba will not be voting in this election. She left the Gambia with her two young children in September. She took part in this small opposition rally in April. Security forces arrested her and beat her unconscious. She escaped, traveling with her children to Senegal. Her journey to safety won't end here. If I have the chance, I will go to Europe. From there, anywhere I can lay my, ha my head, I will go. Anywhere I can have peace, anywhere I can have life, I will go. The UN says 10,000 Gambians sought refuge in Europe this year, but no one seems to know how many fled or died crossing the Mediterranean. President Yaya Jame on the campaign trail. He's ruled the country for the last 22 years after he took power in a coup. Since, he has won all presidential elections. Human rights organizations accuse him of putting critics in prison, even killing them. The opposition fears Jame will rig the vote in his favor. Our election system is not, uh, is rigged proof, is not proof. You cannot rig our elections. And I want you to go to the counting stations and see how elections are done in this country. Then you know that there's no reason for anyone to go to this place. Al Jazeera was refused access to cover this election. The border is closed and phone and internet have been shut off. The Gambia is on full lockdown. We've spoken to several Gambians who have crossed the border illegally. It's a dangerous journey, and if they get caught, they risk being tortured or even killed. Despite the risks, countless Gambians continue to flee their homeland. The opposition has gained momentum, and they hope people will come out to vote for change. Meanwhile, unaware of the crackdown, thousands of Europeans vacation in the Gambia on cheap holidays organized by British tour operators. But Sukai is all too aware of the repression. And unless there's an end to Jami's rule, her future is on the road north and across the Mediterranean. And we can now speak to Nicholas. He's in Karang, which is at the Gambia-Senegal border. First of all, Nicholas, tell us who are the candidates who are challenging Jami in this election? Well, Laura, there's two candidates challenging Jame. One is called Mana Kande. He used to be part of the ruling party, but then created his own political party, is running as an independent. Now, some members of the opposition say that he's been propped up by Jame himself, mounting a fake opposition for this election. And then there's Adama Barrows, a former estate agent who was once a security guard in a department store in England. He's heading a seven-party coalition. It's the first time that the opposition is united under one candidate. He's really the people's choice. Now, this election will be literally down to marbles and tin cans. Inside each police station are three tin cans, a green one for Jame, a grey one for Barrows, and a purple one for Mane. And by the end of the day, people will be dropping marbles inside these cans, and there will be a tally to count who, how many votes there are. Now, of course, there's been five of these elections since Jami took power in a coup in 1994, and he's won all of them with a comfortable margin. Uh, it's so interesting to see how people are actually voting there in the Gambia. And of course, you're not able to see it yourself. You're not being allowed into the country. I and mean, given these circumstances, is there any guarantee that this is going to be a free and fair election? Well, Laura, you know, the European Union, who usually monitors these elections, haven't been allowed into the country. In fact, there's one African Union observer for 1,400 polling stations. It's just literally impossible for people to monitor these elections um, carefully. Diplomats in the Gambia are actually trying to go inside these polling stations to try to, um, to, to watch whether there's going to be a correct tally. But the big anomaly in this election is the number of registered voters. There are 840,000 people registered to vote in a country of a population of less than 2 million. And remember, half of that population is less, uh, less than 18 years old and are not allowed to vote. So 840,000, that's 
a big number for a small country. Now, Yaya Jammeh has said that he will not accept that the opposition protests, even peacefully, um, the outcome or the results of these elections. He said time and time again that he's ready to rule the Gambia for billions of years to come, and he's confident that he'll win this election again. Okay, we'll have to wait and see, won't we? Nicholas Hack, thanks very much for joining us there from the Senegal-Gambia border.